A sunburned man found a lump on his arm. This is what happened to his brain. KC is a 45-year-old man presenting to the emergency room with a 15-minute seizure. His wife Jennifer tells the admitting nurse at admission that he had been developing weakness on the left side of his body over the last few days. You see, KC was a farmer on rural middle America. Every year he was sunburned for at least three months from working out in the fields. Didn't really care about anything for his health because he'd been okay his whole life. Several months ago, a sunburned KC found an asymmetrical pigmented lesion with irregular borders growing rapidly on the skin of his right arm. Day after day, the lump would seem to morph into something new, grow larger and ulcerated but without pain. He thought it might be cancer. The doctor's visit was unnecessary, he thought. Most of his farmer's life was fixing of his own. He lived a self-sufficient life. He always had the tools to get the job done, and in the case of his skin cancer, this is something he could fix himself. Immediately after removing his own skin tumor, Casey thought that his story was over. Nothing more to be done here. Wrap it up with clothes and carry on, he thought. Over the next few months, KC felt great, but noticed there was a lump growing inside his right armpit, underneath the skin. His wife suggested he sees a physician, but KC joked to his wife that he's his own surgeon now. He said he did it once, and if he has to do it for the lump in his right armpit, he'll do it again. Except, a PET scan revealed hypermetabolic lymph nodes in that region. Hyper meaning high, metabolic referring to cellular division and lymph nodes denoting the structures in your body where white blood cells from your immune systems accumulate drain. These kinds of lymph nodes indicate that something is growing inside his right armpit. About a month ago, Jennifer started to notice KC developing irregularities in his walk. It appeared to look like a limp, that when confronted about it, KC would deny anything. He actually couldn't see himself deteriorating. He started to develop a weakness on his left side and began developing headaches that were so bad. He'd feel as if someone were pushing from inside his skull against his eyes. His entire family began to notice changes in his personality. A normally patient and down-to-earth man would now get physically angry at everything. Until one day while working out in the fields, he suddenly collapsed on a 15-minute seizure. An MRI revealed multiple lesions developing in the several regions of Casey's brain. Because there is no indications of inflection, cerebral bleeding and signs of radiation damage to his brain, and because these tumors don't have the characteristics of a primary tumor, it means that Casey doesn't have brain cancers elsewhere in his body, and they've spread to his brain. Looking at the cells under microscope, multiple markers were positive for a type of skin cancer, based on presence of the polymer that gives tissue color and pigmentation, something called melanin. Even though KC had removed the cancer from the skin of his right arm, it appears that cells from that primary tumor are now growing in mass in his lymph nodes and in his brain. If in a healthy person, you wouldn't normally find skin cells growing in the brain, then how is it possible that Casey's cancer spread to his brain? Well, cancer is more than just a genetic disease. It's an evolutionary step to highly successful cellular survival at the expense of its host. In Casey's case, gives us more evidence of this. For KC, removing his own primary tumor meant very little, because at some point, either before or after he removed it, the cancer had already started to spread all throughout the body. There's few things that can be done, but the prognosis or the predicted outcome of his disease at this late stage is grave. Once melanoma has metastasized to the brain and produced symptoms like a 15-minute seizure, historic data from multiple studies show the time at which 15% of patients are left alive is less than 5 months, and that by 8 months after diagnosis, about 10% of patients are still alive. Statistically, there will be these few patients who live with stable disease, but those patients are the exception and not the rule. Casey was offered brain surgery in an attempt to prevent more seizures, prevent the tumor from causing a brain bleed, and minimize neurologic dysfunction. But it appeared that Casey presented to the emergency room too late, as additional seizures and intracerebral hemorrhage ensued before any treatment was initiated. Sunscreen is must for anyone who spends a long periods of time outside. 
It shields one from the harmful UV radiation from the sun that damages the DNA of skin. Early detection along with going to a surgical oncologist consultation instead of removing the skin tumor himself could have prevented this outcome for Casey. Thank you so much for watching and be well.